Hey everybody, welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 54. In this tutorial we are going to implement ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is lighting that affects everything in the scene. If an object has no dynamic lights hitting it, then it will only be lit by whatever your ambient lighting value is. In order for us to add ambient lighting, we will need to modify our constant buffer for our pixel shader or add a new constant buffer. Our previous constant buffer in the pixel shader was only storing the alpha value, and this was just for demonstrating uh, blending on the blending tutorial. We're no longer using it like this, so let's just change it to be used for our lights. For our ambient light, we will have two values. We will have the color, and we will have the light strength. Down in our pixel shader, let's go ahead and change where we were using the alpha to just use a fully opaque value of 1.0. Next, we need to go to our constant buffer types, and we need to modify uh, the constant buffer we were using for the pixel shader. I'm going to rename it to just be uh, constant buffer pixel shader for lights. And for our ambient light, we are going to have a XM float 3 for the color and then just a float for the strength. Keep in mind that the constant buffers must be 16 byte aligned, which this happens to be, it happens to work out because the float three takes 12 bytes and the float takes four and they don't exceed 16 bytes. So it's not going into the next 16 byte chunk. In our graphics header, we will have to modify where we were using the old uh, constant buffer for the pixel shader. I'm going to do a control F on anywhere that was using the old pixel shader and update that. Next, let's go ahead and initialize what our light values will be. So for the color, I'm just going to initialize it to be white. So this means that our ambient light will basically show the full red value, the full green value, and the full blue value of a pixel. If you, for example, set the red value to zero, then you would not see any of the red in the image. Next, we are going to set the ambient light strength, and we're just going to initialize it to be fully lit. Let's go to the pixel shader and implement the HLSL code related to this. First, I'm going to change the pixel color variable to be sample color. Then we're going to add a new variable to store the final color. We are going to get the ambient light by taking the ambient light color multiplied by the ambient light strength. We are going to calculate the final color by taking the sample color multiplied by the ambient light. In the render frame function in the graphics CPP, we need to update the constant buffer for the pixel shader. So what we will do is we will call CBPS light apply changes. We also need to set which constant buffer the pixel shader is using. So we will call device context. We will set the constant buffers. Next, I want to be able to change the ambient light at runtime. So what we will do is we will go down here to our I'm GUI window, and we will make this for our light controls. We will need to add a drag float three for the light color. And it expects a pointer to uh, floats, or to an array of floats, so I'm just referencing the very first member of the float three and the ambient light color. And then for the speed, we'll do 0 0.01 for the minimum uh, zero for the maximum one. We also need to make a drag float for the strength. And we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and test this out and see what we get. All right, so we see the Dodge Challenger model. So let's try removing all of the red component from the ambient light. And you'll see that the body of the car becomes completely black since it was pure red before. 
can also adjust the strength of the ambient light and it just makes the image darker. And, you know, you could take out the uh, green and blue components and just get a purely red car. I guess most of it has at least some red in it. And yeah, that's pretty much how ambient light works. I'm going to go ahead and end this tutorial with that. In the next tutorial, we are probably going to look at creating a light class for dynamic lights and first having it so that we can see the light in 3D space to be able to visualize it better and then actually applying some diffuse lighting and some specular lighting.